Have you ever felt like you should be stronger than you actually are in a game? Maybe you solo killed your laner a few times, but you just feel like you can't do anything more against him now. Well, then listen up because this video is going to be perfect for you. We're going to be going over three tips to maximize your gold lead in any role. Don't forget to show that like button who's boss in order to let us know that you like this video and we'll keep more coming your guys' way. If you guys want to learn more on the topics that we've covered here, make sure that you check out our website gameleap.com. I'm going to be making guides that will only be posted on there and all of the content that's already Already there is made by challenger level players. If you're interested, make sure you go check it out in the description below. First things first, do not miss CS. Try your absolute hardest to get every single piece of CS that shows up on your screen. To give you guys an idea of just how much gold minions give you, if you missed 50% of the minions that you could have gotten in the first 10 minutes, you're missing out on over 1500 gold. That's a ridiculous amount of money and can easily make a completed item. Now, nobody's gonna get perfect CS just by practicing for a day. This is something that you should do every once in a while and absolutely try to perfect it. You can even do it with a friend. Just go into lane and try laning against each other for the first couple minutes of a game. Honestly, the more distractions that you can provide to yourself while practicing CSing, the better. If you can do it while you're super distracted, say you're one-on-oneing one of your friends while trying to maximize your CS in lane, that's perfect. If you can do it then, you should be able to do it in game. There are tons of ways that you can practice CSing, and for the long term, the best way to do it is to go into practice tool and restart the game every 10 minutes or so. Practice your early game CSing, that's where it's going to matter most. As you get stronger and stronger, it becomes easier and easier to CS with either your abilities or your auto attacks. For those of you who play jungle and support and might be thinking that this doesn't really apply to you, that's just simply not true. If you decide to start a camp as a jungler, you always want to kill it as fast as you possibly can. This makes it so that it can respawn soon as possible and give you more gold and experience as the game goes on. If you just clear things without really committing your abilities to them when you can, or you just do it slowly, it's not efficient and you're going to be losing out on gold and experience as the game goes on. Also, don't forget to use your smite. Sometimes I even make this mistake. I catch myself sometimes having two charges of smite up, and that's bad. You don't want that because that means that you're wasting the effective cooldown of the spell. For my friends in support, you have two different jobs, and it depends on the type of champion that you're playing. If you're playing a champion that uses the Targon's effect, where you can execute minions for your AD carry, you want to maximize the amount of gold that you get out of it. This means that you want to save stack for cannon minion and melee minions only. Obviously, if there's only mage minions around and you have a bunch of stacks, go ahead, kill them. But early on, you want to make sure that you get those cannons and melees as much as you possibly can. If you're playing a champion that doesn't use the Targon's effect, your job is to give your AD carry room to be able to CS comfortably. Something that happens in bot lane is that when you walk up to CS, because a lot of people have high range or long range abilities, they're gonna get poked when they go to auto attack a CS. Don't let this happen for free. Either shield your AD carry if they're going to get hit, or use your own abilities to try and pressure the enemy off of them. You don't want to just take free damage for getting CS because eventually you're going to get poked out of lane and you're going to have to recall. Your job is to minimize this as best as you possibly can. The last part of playing a support and worrying about maximizing your gold lead is that if your AD carry isn't there and CS is just dying in front of you, last hit it. There's no reason for you to just let the minion die in front of you. Your support item is deactivated when they're around, so there's no no harm in killing a minion when nobody else is around to do it for you. Now that we've talked about getting every single last hit on your screen to count, let's talk about getting them there in the first place. Our second point is taking good recalls. This way, you get to your lane in the most efficient time possible and miss the least minions that you possibly can. Before we talk about when to actually recall, let's talk about what you do on the way back from the recall. First, when you go and shop, you want to try and just click outside of the base while you're buying your items. This way, you start moving as soon as you possibly can. It might seem like a small amount of time, but add it up over the duration of a game and you're saving actually a significant amount of time. This can be kind of tricky to master, and everybody does it a little bit differently. Me personally, I keep my shop open while flicking my mouse towards the edge of my screen and right clicking towards where I want to go. Some people like to close the shop and just walk and then reopen it and do whatever they want to do as they're walking out of the base that way. 
Some people might have a super tiny shop set up and it's not very difficult for them to click outside the window and other people try to click as soon as they recall towards their lane and then buy as fast as possible in one opening of the shop. No matter what method you're doing though, it's important to know what items you want to buy and what you can do to help prep towards what you're buying is that while you're leaning, decide what you want to buy and search for it in the shop get it on your screen. That way, the amount of time that you spend in the shop while actually in base is minimized. Doing this while you're laning and taking maybe a second at a time occasionally to get things ready makes it so that while you're recalling, you don't have your shop open and unfortunately getting killed by that jungle gank that you didn't see coming because you had the shop open. On top of all of this, if you have movement abilities that are relatively cheap, make sure you use them. We can talk about Lucian Dash, 40 mana at rank 1, Use it on the way back to lane, it's just faster. Shen Dash, he has energy. Use it on the way back to lane. Caitlyn Net, boom, use it on the way back to lane. LeBlanc W, Fizzy, there's tons and tons of abilities that you can use to make yourself speed up towards your lane. Use them, it's a resource that you absolutely should use. After we've gotten all that out of the way, we're actually gonna talk about the second point now, when to recall. Now, I have to say that if you don't have good CSing, this tip is gonna be actually kind of dangerous for you to put into practice. If you start looking to get backs that have ideal numbers of gold without being able to get the gold efficiently, you're probably gonna end up overstaying in lane. You might have already guessed that the second point is talking about gold timings. You want to try and back with 1300 gold for that BF sword, or 1050 gold for that sheen, or 1300 gold for that lost chapter. Regardless of what item it is that you're trying to buy to make yourself spike as hard as you possibly can, it doesn't have anything to do with wave management. We're not going to talk about wave management here because wave management is an incredibly complex topic that absolutely deserves its own video. What we can talk about though is the basics of what to avoid. If you see that you have a lot of friendly minions in the lane and they're kind of getting stuck right before the enemy tower, you need to make sure that you shove that into the enemy tower so the wave doesn't stay there forever. If the enemy had been forced to recall, those minions are going to stay there until they get back and then they're going to get all of that gold while you're going to miss all of the minions that die to your huge wave. The same goes for the opposite. If you see that big wave mounting up, you want to make sure that you're there to catch it because the enemy might be missing out on a ton of experience as their mage minions start demolishing your wave and then you're just there to catch it at your tower or maybe when it freezes in front of your tower. The most basic form of recall is to recall on the cannon minion wave. Cannon minions come every three waves. If you can coordinate your cannon minion wave with your recall, it's going to be incredibly hard for your opponents to shove the wave into your tower in order to deny you minions. So if your lane is frozen right in the middle and you and your opponents are going at it, all of a sudden, you hit that 1300 gold spike for your early game BF sword and you know that your cannon minion is about to come out of your base, recall. It's the right time. Even if you're still healthy, even if you still have some mana, it's more optimal in the long run. The key here for this second tip is to recognize when losing a few minions right now is going to prevent you from losing a ton of minions in the future. If you're stuck in lane with just a Doran's Blade or a Doran's Ring or a Corrupting Potion, and all of a sudden your enemy comes out with an item that's worth over a thousand gold, you can't pressure them. It just doesn't happen. There might be a few exceptions where the matchups are just that bad for your opponent, but in reality, most of the time, an 1000 gold lead is going to crush and decide the lane. For our third and last topic, we're going to be talking about tower plates. What are you supposed to do when you destroy your tower? Regardless of what lane you're in, top, mid, bot, even if you're a jungler, if you assist in taking down the enemy top lane's tower, what are you supposed to do? The answer is a lane swap. It's not always the right answer, but it's actually pretty easy to tell when it's the right move. All you really need to do is look at your team and the enemy team. Look at your champion and the enemy champion. Can you lane swap to a lane where you can dominate your opponent? Does your lane swap cause your ally to lose out on a lot? Consider these factors and decide if the lane swap is right for you. There is one scenario where it's always the right answer though, and that is if you take the enemy bot lane's tower. The only question that follows that is whether you go top or mid. And that depends on the individual matchups. If you have, say, a scaling mid laner who doesn't really have a lot of mobility, it can be pretty risky for them to go into the long lane bottom. But if they can manage it, that's great. On the flip side, if your top laner's in a bad matchup, then don't send them to that long lane because they're going to get abused by their opponent eventually. You don't want that to happen. Simply swap with your mid lane, and it's fine. 
they'll be okay. Most mid laners have a lot of mobility, and even if they die, it's not the worst thing in the world. You're gonna be smashing that mid lane tower. If your top laner is in a good matchup though, absolutely send them bot lane. They are going to be able to crush their opponent because they have no tower to keep them safe. Their overextending won't matter as much because they could even have the potential to 2v1. So, what did we learn today? We talked about making every last hit that you get on your screen count. Then, we spoke about good recalls, and how to set up good recalls, and how to maximize your efficiency on getting back towards lane. Then, lastly, we talked about dealing with tower plates and how to get as many plates as you possibly can. If you guys want to learn more on the topics that we've covered here, make sure that you check out our website, GameLeap.com. I'm going to be making guides that will only be posted on there, and all of the content that's already there is made by challenger level players. If you're interested, make sure you go check it out in the description below.